Hi guys, um, welcome back to another set of flip notes. This one is about the fallout of the Reformation, the things that happened after the people like Martin Luther and Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth and John Calvin had spoken out or taken the steps and the actions that they had taken in order to um, change the Catholic Church. So, um, this is going to talk a little bit about what happens largely in France and in Germany, as well as, um, depending on my time frame, um, the Catholic Church's response as well. But I'm going to try, I always keep them to 15 minutes or less, so we'll see how far we get. Um, the Reformation obviously is about theology, it's about religion. Um, theology is a study of religion. Um, but it is going to lead to significant changes, both economically and politically, throughout Europe and then ultimately throughout the entire world. Um, the division between Catholics and Protestants, while all under the umbrella of Christianity, led to some fairly devastating situations um, throughout the entire the entire continent, um, which actually isn't all that new. Um, since the beginning of religion, people have fought over religion. Um, but this is a little different in that it's Christians fighting Christians, which was sort of new for the world. Um, just so you can see sort of what's going on. If you take a look at this map on the bottom, I like the, the brightness of the colors on this one. Um, but you can see that you've got like a red and a blue. The red are the the countries that are going to ally with the um, Protestants. And the blue are going to ally with the Catholics, which is super strange. Because if you notice um, the Ottoman Empire down here, they're Muslim, right? And um, while well, obviously England has converted to Protestantism, and so is northern parts of Germany. France is staunchly Catholic, um, but they're also going to ally with Protestants. Um, and so it gets super complicated because it, it, it changes the entire nature of the game. Because what we have is we have this ruling group called the Habsburgs. Let's see if I can bring them forward. And the Habsburgs were ruling the Holy Roman Empire. And um, you can see on this map, they controlled this, everything inside this like deep purple. Um, and so they are, are, there's a lot of land there and a lot of even different languages being spoken there. Um, but the people in the German regions are going to convert to Protestantism with Martin Luther. And um, they're going to start fighting against the Catholic Habsburgs. And that's what's going to lead to, to some some complications in political structures. So, like I said, those princes, they convert to Protestantism. They no longer are under control of the Pope, while the Habsburgs, that were the ruling family and controlled basically everything in that red zone on this map, um, are going to continue to remain Catholic, and that's going to cause not just some tension, it's absolutely, it genuinely causes a war. It's a war called the Thirty Years' War, which kills tens of thousands of people, um, and it pits all the powers of Europe. Because part of the problem with Europe is that the families are sort of all interconnected because of ruling family marriages. So um, you may remember that I mentioned that Henry VIII's first wife was the daughter of the King of Spain. So sitting on the throne of England is a Spanish princess, right? Well, they're also directly related to the ruling family in France. And they're also directly related to the ruling families of the Habsburg Empire. Um, and so it's it's all super woven and interconnected. Um, it plays out throughout most of modern European history, um, even so far as during World War I, the King of England's wife was think a first cousin of the Kaiser of Germany. So you're literally families fighting families throughout history, European history. Um, and it's, it's a pretty bloody war. It's a pretty devastating war. Ultimately, um, the Habsburg lose a lot of power and a lot of control over the entire region. And so it's going to lead to some new independent German um, states, German kingdoms. Um, the 
situation in France is super difficult um, because there's a lot of infighting in France. There were Protestants who were being rounded up and slaughtered by French Catholics. Uh, they were afraid that the Protestants were trying to take over the French throne. There are some reports of, of incidences like that happening, but there's much more devastation um, at the hands of the Catholics who would go to uh, predominantly Protestant villages and just burn them to the ground. Um, is a horrible um, act of civil violence in the, that sounds weird, citizen violence um, in France for a pretty significant period of time. Ultimately, the King of England had to issue something called the Edict of Nantes. That's this Nantes-looking word, Edict of Nantes. And it granted freedom of worship, which is one of the first times that we see freedom of worship in a European country. Um, it generally is whatever religion your king is, you must also be. So England was Catholic, and then Henry VIII made them Protestant, and then Mary made them Catholic, and then Elizabeth made them Protestant. Um, but France is saying, like, we're going to be a Catholic country and we're going to ally ourselves with Catholicism, but we are not going to allow our citizens to attack and kill each other for the basis of their religious beliefs. Um, it's really revolutionary at the time. It's one of the first big steps toward modern freedoms in the world. Um, but additionally, one thing that the Catholics do that shocks everyone is they were expected to ally with the Habsburgs in the Thirty Years' War. Because they are a Catholic powerhouse and the Habsburgs were a Catholic powerhouse. And basically the French government led by Cardinal Richelieu, um, who's um, a cardinal, which means he's a Catholic, um, like a top level Catholic official um, who sits on the advisory board, the advisory council for the king of France at the time, was like, look, um, we need to make this about France. Like, we don't need to be fighting over religion. We need to make sure that France is getting what France needs. And so they were hoping that by a win in the Thirty Years' War, they were going to get, they'd lost some land here in the southern sector. They were hoping to get that land back. Um, it's, a, it's a huge move that um, genuinely shocks everyone. No one saw that the French would fight on the same side as the um, Protestants, especially since the Euro the English are supporting the Protestants in Germany too, and France and England have had this horribly tense relationship for ever. Um, but yeah, they, they switch sides, and so they turn the whole Thirty Years' War from a religious conflict into a political one where it's more about land grabs and power than it is about religious control. Um, so... What do the Catholics do? So here's the deal. You've got Martin Luther and John Calvin speaking out about all these terrible things they believe the Catholic Church is doing. You have countries completely changing allegiances for political gain, right? Henry VIII wants to control his family line, so he just says, we're not going to be Catholic anymore, and we don't have to listen to the Pope. He has Parliament deem him the head of the church and breaks ties completely. And so they have to do something. So they meet together, and they're fighting a war, right? Europe is in the middle of a 30 years war, and it's devastating. So they get together, and something called the Council of Trent. So it's a meeting, right? It's a it's a, a convention, right, where they discuss all the claims the reformers are making. And basically, they sit down, and they go through, and they're like, well, should we change this? Should we change this? What about this? And at the end of the day, they reaffirm most everything they're doing. They make basically no changes, and they decide, we're good. It's fine. Um, they do decide at that point to get rid of indulgences. Um, but other than that, very few changes are actually made. They do create this Society of Jesus um, that does come out of the Council of Trent. Oops, sorry. Um, which is a missionary group, right? Their job is to spread the word of God, spread the Catholic word of God around the world. Um, the... The colonization of the New World is largely helped out in Spanish-speaking regions by the Jesuits. They travel with sailors, with conquistadors, and with um, the, you know, I'm sure hundreds of thousands of, of ships that come later and um, set up schools and that sort of thing and teach people to read but also teach them Christianity. Um, so they're they're generally tasked with doing a lot of good work in the world. Um, but it also creates the Spanish Inquisition. And the Spanish Inquisition is a court system, but it's a court system under the Catholic Church. It's used largely in Spain. Um, whoops. Um, 
to sort out who is good and who is bad as in terms of being a Catholic. So they expel the Jews and Muslims from Spain. They literally round up and move out, kick out all Jewish and Muslim people from Spain in the hopes of having a completely Catholic citizen base in Spain. Um, they used a lot of torture. They used a lot of fear to reinforce Catholic teachings. At one point, they attack Galileo, who we'll talk about in the future, and put him on house arrest. Um, for speaking out against the fact that um, the sun is the center of our solar system as opposed to Earth. The Inquisitional Court, again, is a court. Um, it's You're on trial, and it's it's a really terrible situation. Um, there's a lot of torture that happens, and it's pretty intense. It's not something we would, have su we would support, um, and it's not something most Catholics would have supported even then. Um, the results of the Protestant Reformation are... Growth of secularism, so we're going to start studying non-religious topics, right? The growth of worldly topics. The growth of skepticism, people are going to know, they're going to lose faith in the Catholic Church, as well as a lot of government authority for the decisions that are being made. Um, you're going to have a focus on individuals rather than the church and society as a whole. And you're going to see the beginnings of religious tolerance led largely by the French concept of the Edict of Nantes that granted French Protestants freedom of worship. The Huguenots were given freedom of worship. And we've got one more, I think. Yeah, the role of the printing press. So Johann Gutenberg invents the printing press early on in the um, Protestant Reformation. And because of that, they're able to print the Bible in vernacular languages, in the spoken languages, which is a huge shift. Because before that vernacular, you had to know Latin in order to read the Bible. So that's one of the reasons indulgences were so popular is because you didn't even know because you couldn't have read the Bible to know that it wasn't even in there. So by printing it in English and French and German and all the languages people speak, translations of the Bible are then making the Bible more accessible. So people are going to learn how to read more because be, the ability to read is going to be, I mean, exponentially growing um, because by, books are, are more readily available. Instead of having to be handwritten and hand copied, you can make them on a printing press and make them in, in bulk. Um, but also it's going to spread ideas from the Renaissance and the Reformation um, because it's not just books that are being printed. It's pamphlets. It's quick things. Um, newsprint, right? News stories can be carried um, around larger areas. So it's a massive change. Um, imagine going from a world where you never saw a printed book to all of a sudden being able to hold a book in your hand. It's it's, it's amazing the amount of um change that can happen in that time period so that was quick um i know that was fast so sorry about that um, i wanted to get it all in um and if you have any questions as always let me know reach out in whatever way works for you um so that we can we can continue this conversation thank you